All Spark TV. Now that's just prime. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. Your yeah. Oh my gosh. You start. That's crazy. That's that's a that's a crazy thing. Um, you know it's tough because I'm. I feel like we are living in an age where it told me uh, six years ago that Ben and I would have a chance to do great characters like Snapdragon or Skylink in, in a commander class. I would have thought, yeah, with the NASA, some, somehow Ben was able to bring those worlds together. I, I think we're, we're living in a time where the, the impossible seems possible. So, um, you know, I, I have a chance to come into work every day with great guys like Ben, and we, we make magic happen. So that's hard That's hard to say. When you're when you're living living the dream, it's it's hard. I think one thing that we have started, that we're starting to do more, that we haven't seen a lot of these, uh, maybe right now, in Cybertron, is bringing new characters into the property. I think that's why right. Cyberverse yeah. has been really fun to do that. A character like Wild Wheel, who no one has a clue his story yet, but what I've read online of people making up his story before, that is just bonkers and fun. And I think that's where you know, we look at a lot of the, every story we're telling, we have chances to, to do that. I think that's when you know, rubbing that magic lamp is what, what new character, a new story that comes out of that character, to me is what I'm I think most proud of, being part of this brand. Um, but even to do characters that have been done before, part of lore, we spin them, right? And do something fresh and new. And, and I work with IDW, and you know, I work with the Netflix, and give a new backstory. And I think that's, you know, I know FJ is a huge fan of Elite Four. It's part of the Wolf of Cybertron series. We had some images today. Like, that to me is, but we do get to rub that lamp every day. Like, we don't have just three wishes. You know, like, every day we get to rub that lamp. Like, what's today's wish? So I guess the uh, joy and the luxury. Okay, so one thing I've noticed in this uh, progression in the War for Cybertron trilogy is like a further leaning into MicroMasters. First, we kind of got them on their own. Yeah. Now we have the uh, the bases. Um, one thing I was wondering about going for that. I know you don't comment usually like on specific announced figures, but have there been conversations maybe around the uh, the MicroMaster transports like overload? something that good uh, oh you know I, I i have some of those in my office i i, I was uh, I, you know i like to find weird stuff and i just keep it in my office it helps to inspire inspire me inspires the team <laughs> and we're, we're um we've looked at those guys before okay. some of them are, are pretty whacked out but it but it would be really neat to be able to bring one of those guys to life the 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 trick is when and where does it fit in the universe but um you know i love challenges like that because it's like, who'd have thought we'd be able to make a robot on an airwave, you know? Yes. Airwave's really the MicroMaster that comes with the airwave. So we were able to kind of create something new, like you were talking about, something that was, you know, sort of an obscure part of the world. So, How long yeah, did Hot Leak actually make it on screen in the 80s? Oh, God, it was seconds, not even seconds. Yeah. He was him and a couple other dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that just got giddy excited over those. So yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. I, I love. I'm a detail freak, so I love. I love trying to figure out all those little elements to try to complete my scene. So. And then John comes to me and shows me this weird geeky, and I'm like, he get, but, but he gets it. But then eventually I come around. Yeah, yeah he geeks out too eventually. Yeah. So uh, with the success of the G1 Beast line, are there any plans to reach the toys from any other lines like Beast Wars or Robots in Disguise or the Unicorn Show? Absolutely. I mean, when you when you look at it across our franchise, right, we've got we've got great Beast Wars characters. Yes, the answer is yeah, sure. cool. We have lots of great animations this year, next year, and for the foreseeable future. Well, even in Cyberverse, right? Beast Wars characters in there. You've got Unicron trilogy. Yeah, like. So Gen Selects is a good opportunity to put Cybertron Defense Hot Hot Shot in there, which is totally random. But there's like there's some other great characters from Armada. You know, I'm a big fan of um, the Armada Starscream. It's an awesome character. Yes. Different personality, really cool all form, and a whole generation of fans love it. So I mean, that's a cool thing about working on. You know, like I love making new stuff, but there's so much cool material. You can but I think that's the balance of what we've yeah. had fun doing. Is when we have a chance to bring some vintage, like the actual G1 issue toys, we've reimagined a lot of G1. One characters we're starting to Beast Wars characters starting to bring characters, uh, you know, whether it's from modern or kind of into this modern universe, and that's equally as fun. And we're seeing a lot of teens, tweens, like, wow, this is so cool. And they have no idea you know, the original source material for those characters when they first get it, but then they, they dive in and they figure it out. And now they're introduced to whether it's, you know, Cybertron or John or Prior. 
I remember when I first came onto this brand many, many years ago, and the event and I have been working on this brand for the same time that long. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Then um, I, I was a G1 kid. I grew up a G1. That's pretty much I read the comics and I watched the show. And, you know, I just got off watching the, the new movies from Paramount. So that's about, that was my knowledge of trans. I knew about Beast Wars, knew about some things, but it wasn't until I really got in there, started talking to people in San Diego and other conventions. And, like, you see the passion in people's faces when they talk about the Armada trilogy, they talk about the Bay, the Bay Universe, like, and, and you get energized from that. And you realize, like, when I started, when I went back, I started watching all those old Beast Wars. I fell in love with it. And it's crazy. You understand why people love Dinobots so much. And it's like, you feel it. You feel it. And, that's, and they got some magic of working on a brand like this. Is, um, just like the brand, it, you know, the characters convert and transform. Like, it has a way to transform you. There's a tear. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, this is going to get, like, deep into the minutiae of, like, the tooling of figures and the process of oh, how I love things go back and forth. I'm big okay. All right. So... <laughs> Siege Optimus Prime yes. had a, a trailer hitch, yes. but no trailer. Yes. Earthrise Optimus Prime finally comes with a trailer. Yep. But looking deep into the details of the figure, I noticed, like here in the legs, kind of left over from the original Siege Optimus Prime, appears to be that trailer hitch from yes. the old figure, and then we have the new trailer hitch, which this part I, I kind of lovingly refer to as his appendix. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah uh, it's totally an appendix. He doesn't yeah. need it. <laughs> what, what would you like to tell us about like the story of Optimus Prime's two hitches? The sigil tail. Well, when we, when we were working on this guy, the team at Takara told me it's um, it's kind of like that I Love Lucy episode to a certain regard where she's, she's trying to eat the chocolates as they're going down the assembly line. We're given a window to create something, and as you're creating it, you're able to go like, oh wait, you know, I, I, when I was working on the Earthrise Optimus, Yuya and I were working together and I was like, oh, can you make his hands flexible so you can hold the Matrix and they were able to then, oh, can you make the trailer be compatible with the Siege one? Okay, like, no, it's you can't, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so that appendix like, thing, it's like we were able to work it into the, because we knew that um, the magic plays and be able to do, switch it up, do all those things. You never want to be able to like, especially in a line, which is supposed to be a trilogy, you want to be able to cross it. You yeah. want to be able to take like a Titan Master and be able to like swap it out and put, you know, Hardhead's head on the Snapdragon's body just because you want to. Like there's, you want to be able to do that. And and I think that the appendix speaks to that. I think that yeah, it is left over, but it's our attempt to try to make sure it was a continuous way back. Last question, guys. Oh, do you want to like on the because talking about swapping the, out? The, yeah, yeah. Okay, so speaking of kind of the continuity. So we know that the that the small Titan Master on Scorponok is compatible with like the the old uh, Titan Masters from Titan's yes, Return. That's true. Now, how about the larger double Headmaster? Head? Is that cross compatible with Fort Maximus's like Cerebro? Oh, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know. I think it is. Okay. I think it is. You know, I, I should know this question. <laughs> um, I was so myopically focused on trying to figure out this guy. It sounds um, like it's a great pulse release that we put yes, that together and yes, tell you, you tell whether you it is or not. Yes. Oh, well, we you can go. anticipate great, that. Great. Yeah. But I can say <laughs> that the mo small uh, Headmaster character is fully compatible across the line. Awesome. And what is his name? <laughs> so this came up. Yeah. So yeah. Put me on the spot in the presentation. So it was that me. Was you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Um, so on package, it is. It says Lord Zero. You know, the copy cleared thing. But I can say that we drew from lots of different inspiration on that. One of the characters we drew from was Mega Zerak. Mega Zerak um, is a character uh, with a larger transformer, small character than Lord Zerak. Lord Zerak comes from the. He's a weird green face dude from the comic book. This version, we didn't want to have a little weird. Green face dude, going to have it continuous with the rest of the headmasters. Mm -hmm. And then the, the body shape of the larger character, or Zerak, is set on package, which sort of is drawn from the, 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 uh, the, the source material of Mega Zerak, actually harkens back to the Japanese headmaster series. So that, that's a geeky enough answer for you. So the nice. perfect answer and the fact that it's from like multiple source materials gives you a ton to talk about online. Right. There you go. <laughs> but on package, it is Lord Zerak, and he comes with a headmaster. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. And